as powerful as this meeting is, you cannot know the Holy Ghost intimately if you only depend on meetings like this. The only way to know the Holy Ghost is to get personal with Him. I said initially that you cannot know the Holy Ghost by talking about Him. That's number one. And the Holy Ghost told me one time, He says, Son, if you only come to me when you want to preach the gospel or when you want to preach a sermon, you come to me to gather facts about me, to preach to the people. So you come, you pray, because you have a, a sermon engagement. That's the only time you come. He says, what you are doing is not preaching, it's backbiting. He says, you are talking about me behind my back. Both of us don't have a relationship. You see that? Number two, you cannot get involved or get intimate with people only by group engagements. How many of you belong to a WhatsApp? Let me see your WhatsApp group. Let me see if you have, you have any WhatsApp group you belong to. Your alumni in school, alumni group, church group. You know that you can have up to 200 people on that group or 300 or 400. If you only respond to my comments on the group, that's the only time you talk to me. You only respond to my comments or respond to what I see on the group. You only post on the group when I say something on the group. Or maybe when I post something on Instagram, you only comment on my post publicly on Instagram. Or you only reply to my comment on some post publicly. We cannot have a relationship. If we are going to have a relationship, then you are going to get into my DM. You see that? You have to get personal with me. Are you following my very closely today? You have to get, you have to take me out of the group and talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. So if you depend on a meeting like this to have a walk with the Holy Spirit, it will not work. You have to take him beyond this place and take him home and have a one-on-one -on -one with him and have a personal talk with him and have a personal conversation with him. You cannot grow with your walk with the Holy Ghost if you only see him on Sunday mornings. Not just the Holy Ghost. If you lack a brother or you lack a sister in church and you only see them on Sundays and you only talk to them on Sundays and not privately, you only talk to them when every other person is talking to them. Are you going to have a relationship with them? Answer me now. What kind of church am I having this morning? Are you going to be able to have a relationship with them? No. If you lack a sister in church. How many of you ever liked a sister in church? Well, let me see how you like a sister in church. No one's raising up their hands. I've liked a sister in church before. I liked my wife when I saw her in church. When we're in the choir rears out and everyone is talking to everyone, that's a group engagement. If I'm going to go deeper with her, then I have to, after the choir rears out, what do we do? I get right into her personally and begin to talk to her. The only way to grow your relationship with Jesus is if you get beyond the group and get personal. Give me that Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 in Amplified Version. Do more. Hosea 6 verse 3 in Amplified Version. What does it say? Hosea 6 verse 3. In Amplified Version. What does it say? So let us know. Let us know. And become personally acquainted with him. Media, give me Amplified Hosea chapter 6 on the screen. So let us know and become Personal, is that what it says? Yes, sir. Personally acquainted with him. Personally acquainted with him. Let us press on to Let go. us press on. Personally. After church. Personally, you press on to know him. After church, you press on to know him. God does not deal with us in groups. He deals with us each one. One by one. He wants to have a peculiar, a particular, and a personal relationship with you. In Acts chapter 2, help me do more. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, King James. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. What does it say? Acts 2 verse 1. What does it help me? And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, yes. they were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one. Accord means one. Is that what it means? Is that what it means? So they were one. 
and they were in one place. They were one in unity and they were one in one place. What are you saying? Help me. And suddenly there came a sound. There came a sound from heaven. From heaven, as of a mighty, as of a rushing mighty wind. Rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house. It filled the house where they were sitting. Where they were one, and in one place sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them. And there appeared unto them. Cloven tongues as of a cloven fire. Cloven tongues of fire. And it sat upon each of them. It sat upon each of them. Did you see that? He didn't give them a group fire. They were war in one place. But when the Holy Ghost came, it separated and sat on each one of them. Oh, each one of them had a fire on their head. God does not deal with us as a group. Because some of us may love to hide under group spirituality. When the fire came, the fire divided. Is that what it says? Acts the two. Yes, sir. It divided. Verse three. Help me. And there appeared unto them. Yes. Cloven tongues like as of fire. And sat. And sat upon each. Of each them. of them. The flame sat upon each of them. God has a flame with your name on it. A flame with your name on it. He has a fire for you. He has a fire. Even though they were in a group, even though they were one, even though they were united, yet God separate, separated himself and sat on each of them. Don't be lost in the crowd. Don't let your spirituality be based on group experiences. God wants a peculiar, a peculiar relationship with you. What's the meaning of peculiar? Eh? Unique. He wants a unique walk with you. He wants a special walk. Only you. He's walking with you as though you are the only person there. He cannot do it in a group. God wants to walk with you uniquely. He wants to have a unique relationship with you. Different. Special. Not common. And right now, he's tearing up your heart for something unique with him. The Lord wants to have a unique relationship with you. When I just gave my life to Christ, I used to wonder. The Lord wants to have a unique relationship with me. I'll be wondering, why is the Lord insisting on my life like this? Why is the Lord insisting? Insisting that me, I can, every other person is doing it. Say you, you cannot do it. I said, but God... This other brother is doing it. God says, no, I want to have a unique walk with you. Sometimes you see a big man of God that you, you respect doing something. And the Holy Ghost says, you can't do it. Ah, Holy Ghost, look at this person. Holy Ghost says, no, I want to have a unique walk with you. It didn't take me long before I knew that some of those people that we were even saying, God, this person, God, that person. Those people had even lost their work with the Holy Ghost. They had lost their relationship with the Holy Ghost. That's why you cannot be doing things because every other person is doing it. The Holy Ghost wants to have a special work between you and him. Something special. You know, I have a name I call my wife. Special. I don't call any other person that name. Just me and her. Special. That's the kind of special thing the Holy Ghost wants to have with you. And if you open your heart this morning, it would steer up that special thing with you. Stop looking around. Stop copying. You know, I soon found out, Mr. Gwenga, when I just gave my life to Christ, that the people that we thought we were going together, you know, we thought all of us were going together, we are going. Some of them were not going far. And they knew it. They were not going far. Me, I was saying, no, we are here, all of us. We are, God, God said, you don't know these guys, I know them. You are the one I'm talking about, it's you. You are the one I want to separate. I want to have a unique work with you. The people you call your contemporaries, they are your temporary company. They are not forever. I'm telling you, I soon found out. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, I was in secondary school, in SS2. I was coming from my father's shrine. And I give my life to Christ. 
And I didn't come to an atmosphere of Christians. I was trying to relate with anyone I can relate with, you know, because this was a new place. Ah, what, are, what, are, what, is the thing, what, what do they do here as a Christian? What do Christians do? What is the next thing? I'm so, you know, I was just looking for, for advice everywhere. The Holy Ghost said, come here. You don't, you don't know these people. I know them. I said, no, Holy Ghost, these people... I was eager. He said, said next thing is praying, praying in tongues. Next thing, ah, how do I get, how do I get tongues? How do I get tongues? How do I get say, go and be that pastor? I go, ah, yeah, play hands on me. I began to pray. I just wanted to be with everybody. I want anything I see because be careful. You don't know these people. It wasn't so long before one of the sisters in church had written me a letter. How far, bro? One full cap sheet. You know Fusca? You don't know Fusca? Do you know Fusca? The four pages. Bro, all kinds of things. I said, but are we not Christians? Because even from the shrine where I was coming from, they were not doing that. Satan is more disciplined than you think. Oh. You think Satan is going about doing all those kind of things? There are people who are in the coven of darkness praying and fasting for seven days. People sleep on the grave site. People refuse to eat food for days in search of demonic power. People curse themselves. Look at the prophets of Baal. They cut blood ghost out of their body. It's a high level discipline. So I was coming from that kind of place to come here and meet. So I said, no, sister, so and so. This is not what the law says. He said, forget that one. Even brother so so and so, that brother did that. I was even submitting to. Say so he was already doing that with sister so so and so. So it was even them she saw. That she said, ah, how about brother Philip? So I now understood that my contemporaries are my temporary company. That God had not designed me to stay there forever. Let me show you a scripture in the book of John. Chapter 21, verse 3. John chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Say it unto them. Say it unto them. I go a fishing. I go a fishing. They say unto him. They say unto him. We also go with we thee. We also go with thee, yes. They went forth. They went forth. And entered into a ship Entered immediately. the ship immediately, yes. And that night they, and caught, that night they nothing. caught nothing. What did Simon Peter say? But when the money was now caught. Wait, wait. What did Simon Peter say at that verse? I go out fishing. What did he say? I go out fishing. Answer me, church. Did he say, let's go and fish? What did he say? What did he say? I go out fishing. What did they say? We also. Now, some of you, your spiritual life was going very well together until you saw a Simon Peter. That you saw him going out fishing. You now said, we also. I also. You that did not used to charge before when you go out for ministration. You don't used to charge. To sing about Jesus that died on the cross. Jesus that did not charge you. You sing about someone that did not charge and you charge to sing about someone that did not charge. You don't used to charge. Jesus had a unique relationship. He says, my son, I will take care of you. Don't charge. But then you saw a Simon Peter in the music industry. Who was charging? I said, come here. You are going to be poor. I go efficient. Your work with God was going very well before. That was why he scattered. Because you said, I also go with you. It is not everything you say, I also do. Except it is in the direction of the pool of God in your spirit. You see someone praying in tongues for hours and you say, I also. Ah, that's a good I also. You see somebody serving the Lord and winning souls and you say, I also. Because that's what we did on campus. We provoked each other to good works. Yeah. Say, bro, he said, do you know I pray in tongues for two hours? I say, two hours? Ah, brother, I'll go and do three hours. And we're doing that. We're doing that until we reach ten hours. I also. But in this case, they were leaving the leading of the Holy Ghost. A lot of you were doing well until you met a mature Christian in church. A Christian that got you so familiar with the Holy Spirit. You were carrying just on your head.
You served him with everything you had. Every day, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Everything of your life is Jesus. Then you came and you met this mature brother who had been with Jesus for a long time. He said, come here, you don't know anything. He says, just because you are new, to soon come down your body. We have been here. The fastest way to quench your fire is to move with someone whose fire is already quenched. Because they've been there. Even those that used to kill fire, fire people tell that coal, that, um, what do you have, that ash, ashes, is one of the quickest ways to quench a fire. If you don't clear away the ash, ash are representative of your past experience in the Holy Spirit. Burnt wood, they can become an entrance to this new fire. So the Holy Ghost said to the people, he says, clear off the ash from the altar. Don't come to God with past experience, past experience. Come to God with something new, something fresh. I also, they said, some of us, our work with God was going on well until we met an I also. You know, you know in your heart that it is not you that should be doing what you are doing. The Holy Ghost has spoken to you directly. Pastor, this is my son. This is my own instruction to you. But you met someone who was living carelessly. And because he lives carelessly, and he will still come on the other, and he, and he will do shh. He say, ah, Abba. After all, God is still using him. You don't used to touch women before now. You don't used to touch women before. You did not used to touch women before. You know that you were not this careless. You see, there's a level of familiarity that leads to destruction. Lena, I'll say it again. I said last time, I was heavily criticized on the internet. I'll say it again. You will not see a Lena in a ghastly accident. You will not find a Lena. You see a Lena. You will not find a Lena, someone that is learning how to drive. You will not find him in a ghastly, deadly accident. Why? He doesn't even drive beyond 20. His legs are more on the brake than on the accelerator. If you call him, he will not answer you. If his friend wave at him, he will not see him. His eyes are on the road. His hands, two hands. He does not press his phone. You don't see a learner. You see, it takes a level of familiarity with driving that makes you take your eyes off the screen and be pressing your phone. That is why you are destroyed. Familiarity is what destroys people. That was how Samson had gotten familiar with the Holy Ghost. And he seemed to know the ways of God. And you don't, you, you, you don't used to touch the things you are touching now. You don't used to touch it before. You don't used to touch it. But now you have mastered the Holy Ghost. So yes. You press this, you press that. The power moves. That is why you have the confidence between what you are doing. And how did you get there? You met a Simon Peter that told you, I go a fish. The work with God with you is a peculiar work. The work of the Holy Ghost with you is a very unique one. Number three, talking about familiarity, being familiar for a long time will not translate to true knowledge. Number one, you cannot know a person by talking about the person. Number two, you cannot know the person in group engagements. Number three, being familiar with the person will not translate to true knowledge. You can get familiar. You can be in this church for 10 years and you may not know me. You might be this friend for 10 years, and you may not be my friend. How many of you know that when you were in SS1, there were people that you were coming from GS1 together? Abi? GS1, GS2, GS3, you went to SS1, SS2, SS3. Six years, and they were not your friends. Is that true? We're in the same class. We're seeing each other every day. Every day, Monday to Friday, you were seeing each other every day. You were in the same class, same space. But yet, you were not friends. Because it is not time that makes friends, it is intention. You don't get to know the Holy Ghost because you have spent time being familiar with Him. How do you become friends with the Holy Spirit? He said on Tuesday, number one, desire. Desire. I have to rush this through. Desire. Do you want to give me Isaiah 55, verse 1? Desire. Isaiah 55, verse 1. What does it say? Isaiah 55, verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsted, come, ye to the waters. come to the waters. 
and he that had no money, he that had no money, come ye, come ye, buy, buy, and eat, and eat, yea, yea, come, come, buy, buy mine, and, and milk, without money, without price. He said, you don't have money. He said, but you are thirsty. You see, thirst is your currency. Thirst is your currency. Thirst is your currency. What you buy with in the spirit is thirst. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 7 verse 37, is anyone thirsty? Let him come. Let him come. He said, I will pour water on thirsty ground. I will pour water on dry grounds. Thirst. Desire. You see, you have to desire to be friends with the Holy Spirit. You say, Holy Spirit, I want to be friends with you. When they told me I needed to get baptized in the Holy Ghost after I gave my life to Christ, I said, the Holy Ghost will live on my inside. They said, yes. I said, God will live on my inside. They said, yes. That day, they said, I should come by 3 p.m. I could not eat. I said, Holy Ghost. I don't want Holy Ghost to go and mix with a bar. You see, I cleared the road. He said, it's, Holy Ghost. He said, it's out, of, out of my belly. Ah, I said, I don't want a bar. I don't want anything in this belly. I'm trying to arrange the room for the Holy Ghost. You see that? I was very intentional. I was very serious. I was in SS2. I was praying in the class. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you're coming to me today. Holy Ghost, you're coming to me today. You're coming to me today. And when I went there, the pastor laid hands on me. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I was hungry for it. I had a Baptist friend. His name is Ty Barbara. My friend from Baptist. You know, they just knew about the John the Baptist. They don't know the Holy Ghost, the Baptist. They don't know Jesus, the Baptist of Holy Ghost and fire. So their Baptist is half Baptist. When I went to his church, I was praying the Holy Ghost. He stepped on me. Hey, stop that. Ah, hey, this Baptist church, they push me from here. <laughs> but it was my classmate. It was my roommate in under level in, in philosophy. When I was in philosophy on campus. So that day, I was, I woke up. I had a three-day fast. I didn't eat anything for three days. And that third day, I said, God, I'm going to break my fast today. I was very eager to break. How many of you are eager to break your fast when you have been fasting? I mean, you're eager. Ah, you can't wait. So as a, as a campus student that day, I quickly cooked jollof rice, the one I can cook, you know, campus jollof. Then I put one boiled egg. I say, you this thing. Twelve sharp. <laughs> I'm coming for you. See, as I'm going to class now, as I'm coming back, just get ready for me. But I did not know that in all those times I was praying and fasting in the room. This is my friend, Taye. The Holy Ghost had begun to prick his heart. He began to prick his heart. Say, see your friend. See your friend. See your friend. So I said, Taye, the Holy Ghost just told me now that he wants to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He said, yes. Yes, I'm ready. Yes. I said, when I come back, 12 sharp, I'll be here. Because I'm coming back for this jollof. But he stayed back in the room. He did not leave. He was praying. Holy Ghost, I'm expecting you. Holy Ghost, you are coming. Holy Ghost, you are coming. I went and I came. I saw him when I entered. He was on his bed. He was praying. I met him praying. I said, Tai. He said, yes. I said, follow me. They followed me. I went to the back of the hostel. I said, Jesus, you told me you are going to baptize Tai today with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Tai. Please baptize him with the Holy Ghost. I had hardly finished speaking. The Father of God came on him. Boom. A Baptist brother shook heavily. I had to grab him. He was shaking. He was shaking. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. He prayed, prayed. Five minutes. Ten minutes. Oh boy. The love rise. He's waiting for me. I didn't come here for this. I didn't come here for this, bro. Wrap up. Wrap, wrap up. <laughs> wrap it up, baby. I have work to do. But my brother didn't wrap it up. He kabate, hambante, he barata, he babo. I said, Jesus, this guy will stop. Then Jesus said, you, listen. Listen to what he's saying. And I listened. And poof, like a flash, I could hear all his tongues in plain English language. And Jesus said, I baptized him with praying in tongues. And I've just given the gifts of interpretation of tongues. And we began to worship and began to pray and began to, and I could hear. I said, Tahir, I can hear you. See another one. I can hear you. See another one. I hear you. Right there. In God's presence. Of course, I just went back to my jollof rice. But yeah, we're filled because we 
desired it. Give me Proverbs 18 verse 1. Proverbs 18 verse 1. We desired it. When you come to the window of the Spirit, come with a desire. Come with an hunger in your heart. Please, don't come to the window of the Spirit if you wouldn't come with a desire. I tell you, the fire of God will be full in that land. The clouds are already gathering. When I drive past that place, I suck at a lake. Hey! I could almost see that day in my spirit. The entire, look, all those people that are drinking beer, they will fall under the anointing. If they don't fall, come and press my nose. Their bottles will fall. When the wind came, it came into the prison. It broke every door. Broke every chain. Even though other prisoners were not participating, even them themselves, they were free. Everywhere the sound of our voice can reach is the scope of our anointing. Anybody that can hear us will feel us. The fire of God will drive on the wave of sound. What does it help me? Through desire. Through desire. A man. A man. Having separated when himself. When he separates himself. He seeketh and intermediate with, with wisdom. Through desire. A man separates himself. Desire. Lord, I want it. You see me like this. You say, Lord, I want what's on this guy. This guy, I want what's on this guy. This bro Philip, I want this bro Philip that I'm looking at. What is carrying? I want it. You are here. I stand like that. Everybody's praying. Your own is Jesus. This thing or this guy, this thing that he's doing like this, this, this is what I want. I've seen what I want. I don't want another thing. Just give me this one. Just give me. You are meddling with wisdom. You have separated yourself through desire. I went to Dynamis Church my first time I've been there and I saw miracles. Ha! I saw the unction of God. I saw the anointing of God in the room. I was sitting outside. I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Some of us who have never cried before. Our heart is just so strong. You say, why are they crying? What did Jesus do for them now that we did not see here? What happened to these people? Now, wow, people are emotional. People are just emotional. You are, you are introverts. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't shout. You are just an introvert. Let me take you to a 20th floor building and push you down. You are, you are coming and you say, oh, oh, I'm coming down. Trust me, I'm coming down. Are you shouting? Yeah! Introverts. Say no. We, intro, we are just gentle. You come, you are falling down. Or oh, I take you to my car and open my car, my, my car door and jam your hands. You say, ouch. So I'm not emotional. Come to the window of the Spirit. Come. It will touch you. It will touch you. You will feel it. Your body will tell you. You will know. Through desire, I went there. I began to weep and to weep. He said, I parked my car in area 10. And I entered Kekena Pep because I didn't want traffic issues to stop me. I was just going to breeze in and breeze out. And I knew if they had parked, I might be having difficulties removing my car. Hey, after the meeting, I went to the altar. <laughs> I said, Jesus, I have seen what I'm looking for. Honestly, truth to God who made me. I have seen what I want. This is what I want. I removed all the money in my pocket. I dropped it. <laughs> I don't know if this thing can just convince you, Jesus, that this is what I want. I was crying. I was laughing. I was singing. I was crying. I was laughing. I was singing. I entered the road. I was crying. I was laughing. I was singing. I trekked from area 1 to area 10. I was crying. I was singing. I was, people would have thought I was mad. But they didn't care. I have seen what I wanted. Jesus, this is what I want. Jesus, this thing you are doing. Healings, miracles. I saw the anointing of God flow. People were under the power of God. I said, Jesus, this is what I want. Through desire. Psalms. Chapter 63. Psalms 63. I finished this sermon on Tuesday. Psalms chapter 63. I was supposed to teach you on the 10 things the Holy Ghost will help you with. 10. Can you believe that? 
and it's about the last last point to ten. I've not even gotten there. We do that on Tuesday. Is that number one? Number, uh, Psalm sixty-three. Do you have it? Psalm sixty-three, verse one to two. What does it say? Oh God. Oh God. Thou art my God. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. Continue. My soul thirsted for my thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for my thee. My flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land. In a dry. Land. Is anybody in a dry land? Listen. You are in a dry land. Your walk with God is in a dry place. You fall down on your knees. You can't even pray. You want to open your mouth to pray. The only thing that helps you to pray is that you come to church and there's smoke and there's light and there's music and so you can pray. But when you get back into your house, it's a dry and a thirsty land. There is no power, no presence, no God in your room. And you have to struggle. And even if you try, it doesn't work. The psalmist says, I am in a testy land. And I'm in a dry land. What does it say next? Help me. To see thy power. To see glory. your power and glory. So as I the way seen. I saw it in SLC. Jesus, come to my room. I saw you this morning. I saw you touch that sister. I saw you touch that brother. I saw your power. I saw your glory in the sanctuary. Jesus, I'm in a dry and in a testy place. Come. I want to see. Say, my soul longs for you. My soul tests for you. <sighs> when you get to your room, Jesus, Pastor Philip said, you wanted to have a peculiar work with me. I am here for you. Carry your chair. It's me and you, Jesus. It's me and you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Pastor Philip said to me that you want to have a personal work with me. Ah, we are now. What am I doing? All the race I've run, so this, what did I get? Sit down, Holy Ghost. Carry one chair. Say, Holy Ghost, sit down here. Me, I sit down here. Who ya? People say, Are you mad? He said, Yes, for a while. For a while. I want to talk to the Holy Ghost. Talk to me, Holy Ghost. I've seen your power in the sanctuary. Why can't I pray in this house? Why am I sleeping? Sleeping. Sister Fly, bite me. What's the meaning of this? Why can't the Bible make meaning to me? How are they reading the Bible and it's making sense to them like that? Oh, yeah. They say you are the author. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carry your blackboard. Show me this thing now. Or we are here for a long time. Holy Spirit, I am not leaving you. Ah, when Jacob grabbed that angel, <laughs> angel thought he was joking. <laughs> he said, you will soon find out now. I will not leave you. Ah. Angel pulled his bone. <laughs> Jacob said, <laughs> I don't mind dying. I said, till I see you, I will not leave you. When you get to that point of desperation, Jesus knows a desperate heart when he sees it. Jesus knows a desperate heart. When he saw Zacchaeus on the tree, he knew this was a desperate man. When he saw blind Bartimaeus, he knew. When my life was at the lowest ebb, and I'd done the most terrible thing I could ever do in my life. I carried my bag. I went to the deep camp over 10 years ago. I said, Jesus, if you don't talk to me, I will die here. He knew I meant it. When I entered through the gates of redeemed camp, he opened his mouth. I said, son. I said, yes, Lord. He said, I will speak to you today. I said, that's your business. You don't speak to me first. I will not eat. I will not do anything. I will die. It will be written that one boy came here and he died here. I meant it. When I dropped my bag, he said, by 12, by 10, 15 minutes to 12, meet me outside. We're praying. And he called me outside. I said, come, come outside. I followed the voice. Turn left. I turn left. Turn right. I turn right. He said, you say you're going to talk to me today. Say, I'll talk to you today. Let's go. Walk straight. I walk straight. Turn right. I turn right. That place was a heavy bush. It's not like the way it is now. Heavy bush. I'm talking about almost 15 years ago. Eh? 15 years ago. Bush. So I walked into the forest. 12 midnight, 12.30, I was still walking. When it was 15 minutes to one, and I looked around, and I was in the deep forest with no light. I said, Holy Ghost. Because I said I want to kill myself. <laughs> you think you can lure me here so that wild animals can eat me? He said, no, 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 no. When I'm ready to kill myself, I will do it. You cannot make me do it. I'm going back now. I turned back. I couldn't see the way. Because it was not flesh that led me there. I came by the Spirit. It is not a location in the Spirit. It's a position in the Spirit. As I stood there, I said, ah, so what do I do? I don't know the way back. I saw one man coming. He had a stick in his hands. I said, I must be the night guard. I must be the guard. Let me tell him. You'll be able to tell me my way back. 
when he drew close, I was Pastor Adeboe. He had come there to pray. Ah, Jesus, you brought me here to meet with your soul. You knew I was at the lowest ebb of my life. Nothing would ever make sense. I fell on my knees. I grabbed his leg. I said, Daddy, pray for me. He looked at me. How old was I? I was in pain. I got, I got the most, I, I, I didn't even believe God had a plan for my life anymore. And God led me here. No appointment, no protocol, no usher. Only me and this man. He said, please pray for me. He laid hands on me. Prayed for me. Prayed for me and he walked away. I got up. I said, Jesus, he said, son, if I led you here, if I led you here this night, then it meant I was not done with you. I was not done with you. No matter how bad you feel about yourself, no matter how miserable you've fallen, no matter how bad things are for you, I am not done with you. I'm not done with you. I began to dance. I still didn't know the way back. I still didn't know the way back. And I saw a man and a woman coming, and I said, you see, the test of a true encounter is that every time you relate it, it's as fresh. I tell you, I tell you, it's as fresh. This was like yesterday. It's like yesterday. I saw two people come. I said, do you know the way back? I don't know the way back from here. He said, they smiled at me. I said, turn. Walk straight. Turn left. You see the road. So I turned. When I turned back, I didn't see them again. God has sent two angels to meet me. But I was desperate. And he saw my heart. He saw my heart. Does anybody want Jesus this morning? Maybe you are here, you are tired of religion. You've tried it, you've been in church several times. But this is not even real to you. You do it because your parents led you into this and you are doing it. But if they ask you one on one, do you even know this Jesus? You can't even say you know him. And you are here this morning. You are here this morning. Do you know the Holy Spirit? You cannot say you know him. You maybe even pray in tongues. Maybe even pray. But if I ask you, do you know the third person in the Trinity? Can you describe him? You can't even tell me what he is. You can't tell me because you don't know him. Right where you are. Right where you are. Jesus is out for you. Do you know no matter how down or how deep you have fallen, Jesus will pick you up this morning. No matter how far you've gone, Jesus will take you back this morning. Jesus is not done with you. Pastor, I've missed my way. I've gone all the way. Pastor, I have gone all the way. No matter how far you've gone, Jesus is not done with you. Pastor, I have aborted. I've been everywhere. I've done everything. Pastor, are you saying that Jesus will look away from all the things that I've done and still take me back no matter how far you've been? Yes! Jesus is looking for you. Jesus is looking for you. Pastor, Pastor, if I tell you what I did, no matter how terrible it is, Jesus is looking for you. Jesus is looking for you. He can keep the lookout. He can delicate. Pastor. I have done the most terrible thing. I have despised the Holy Ghost. I have offended him. Jesus is looking for you. No matter how far you've gone, he's not done with you. He's not done with you. He's not done with you. Jesus is not done with you. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. All eyes closed. All heads bowed. You are in this place this morning. You want to say, Pastor, I have heard your sermon. And I don't know Jesus. 
Or I used to know him before, but I've walked away. Who knows this K string song, this Alsa song? He sang. Who knows it? Huh? Yes, sing it. Sing it. In Zamba Kamarda Kai. Sing it. Kiarani Ayesuna. Kiarani Masoina. Can he take me this morning? If he can do anything with nothing, he has my nothing. Tell us, If Jesus can do anything with nothing, can I place my nothing in his hands this morning? Aha. Can I come with my five bread and two fishes? That's all I have. What can Jesus do? With a wretched man, what can Jesus do uh, with a wretched woman? Can Jesus do anything? Uh, can Jesus do anything? Hey, uh. can, Jesus do anything? can Jesus do anything? Can Jesus do anything? All eyes closed. Oh, let's bow. You want to say, Pastor, help me. I want to know Jesus. Lift up your hands. Right hands. Pastor, help me. I want to know Jesus. I want to come to him. I lift up your right hands. I walked away from him. But I want to come back to him. I have never known him before, but I want to know him now. Lift up your right hands. I want to see you. Rush out here now, 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 now. Come out now, fast, fast. If you lifted up your hands, I want to know him for me. I want to know him for me. I want to know him by myself. I sinned against him. I walked away from him. But if Jesus can do anything with nothing, this is my nothing. What will he do with my nothing? Pastor, Pastor Philip, can you help me talk to Jesus? Can you help me tell him this morning? I've come all the way. I've come all the way. I've come all the way. Yeah.